Previously on The Code, Life with the Mariners. We're delayed probably about an hour and a half at the moment. Could be a lot longer. It's two days before Christmas, so all the boys want to get home. Give me four minutes. Give me the rest. Okay. Another four minutes. A rest. And give me another four minutes. Stay down. Yeah. Let us deal with it because, it, it, hey, if I've got to deal with you guys jumping, then okay. I can't move Thank there, you. okay? You imagine their crowds if they were winning every game, but like, they're still getting 20 plus. Good for you, Maka. You'll be playing for Napoli next year. <laughs> Not going that low. Sydney FC now loom as the next opponent for the table-topping Mariners in what should be a challenge both on and off the field for the Coasters. The team, however, will have support from a unique band of football fans who are bound together by new Mariner Nick Montgomery in a true demonstration of the reach of the international football community. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, um, Steve, who, who's on holiday tonight, he uh, he was in the city a few months ago, and he went past the car, and it it had a United sticker in it. So he looked oh, on the meter. Yeah. He looked on the meter. It had like an hour to go, and, he, <laughs> and so he sat by the car and waited for the owner to come back. When shot. It was February the fourth, nineteen seventy-eight, when my dad took me to see Sheffield United versus Wrexham on a very cold Tuesday night in Sheffield. My entire family are born and bred Sheffield United fans, so um, so I've been going down to Bramall Lane ever since I was well as as early as I can possibly remember. My memory is when I when I get emotional and look back, it's it's standing on a cot with 10, 12,000 people, a 30,000 crowd, all all singing a footballer's name. And through the joys of Facebook, I found a, a Sydney Blade supporters club. And we meet up every now and then when the Blades are on TV in the pub and we're blokes from all different walks of life and we've got this common bond of the team between us. So it's particularly nice when we heard last year that Nick Montgomery had signed to play for the Central Coast Mariners. This is a guy who's played over 400 first team games for the Blades over 10 years. And, you know, there's one thing you can say about Monty is that he's one of those players that will put 110% in every time he goes on that pitch. And it's a credit to the man that he does that. Probably a bit of an unsung hero, to be honest. He was the workhorse in midfield, did the, the jobs that nobody else likes doing, is the workhorse of the team. People look at him as an honest pro. You know, he played a lot of games for us. He was dependable. Um, when we were in the Premiership in particular, he was a very, very strong player. He's probably our best performer in the Premiership. If you think about the much publicised behaviour of footballers these days, you know, he's the complete antithesis of that. You know, he's. You know, good family man, you know, honest, hard working, yeah, just, just a complete consummate professional. And, um, you know, to me, that, I'd take my hat off to someone like that. So I've got a lot of time for him. First and foremost, he was loyal to the club. He, he's had, he probably played 400 plus games for Sheffield United. Uh, and if he's as loyal to Sheffield United as he is to Central Coast Mariners, then, yeah, Mariners are in for a, a, a good couple of seasons with Nick Montgomery. And we're all Central Coast Mariners fans. We're all hoping the Mariners can not only carry on winning the minor league but win the uh, win the grand final. It feels like I'm cheating every time I shout another football team's name, and having Monty there makes it a little bit easier. Have you been to Sheffield? You're there, why? Oh, yeah. not that. I went. It was closed. <laughs>
Yellow Army descend on Allianz Stadium, while the not-so-Yellow Army cheer on their hometown hero. Sydney FC have a different coach and are a different team compared to a few months earlier. And as such, are a far more challenging prospect despite their lower ranking on the league table. Oh, lovely ball. Come on! Sydney maybe have just uh, ate, ate the first half. Um, but you know what? When you've got the quality that they're paying for, I think it was, a, it was a great battling performance by the Mariners. We're away from home, it's tough conditions, it's probably 24 degrees. <laughs> I think, you know, keeping Graham Arnold has been a master stroke for the Mariners. You can see the quality that the guy's got, right? Again, I thought, I thought they might sign Graham Arnold as manager, but... Recently, I, I, thought, I thought Arnold would go. Because obviously he's the best manager in the league. He is, yeah, he is. One of the things we love about Monty, he was a one-club man, right? He, he had chances in his career to move to his dream club. And I, I always think it's such a shame. We, we've had a, a history of, of exciting young players that could have fulfilled their potential. And they've gone for a big money, big money deal. And then they've never been heard of again. Monty, after a few games, he came up to Graham Arnold and he said, this is a bit different for me. And he says, what do you mean? He says, you know, this keeping the ball business. <laughs> After half-time, a combination of fatigue and a hungrier opponent finally unravels the visitors. Down one goal, the Mariners' response to the pressure is uncharacteristic, and within 10 minutes, are two men down. Despite the disappointment of defeat, Nick Montgomery takes time to acknowledge his ardent, overage groupings. Yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't one of our better displays, but uh, I think we had enough chances. Uh, to, to win the game before they scored, but uh, we we'll give credit to Sydney. I think they played very well tonight. The best, probably the best they've played all year. You know, I, I thought the performance was positive, but uh, the ill discipline was the negative of, of the performance, and uh, I don't like that that type of thing at all. Oh, it's a bit disappointing, really. You know, they're the best team in the league at the moment, and Sydney aren't, and I don't think they're at that top of the game today, really, were they, the Mariners? You know, if your preparation's not good, well then uh, you can suffer. And you know, we, we got stuck in Wellington for 24 hours uh, where we couldn't get back. The bus went to Blue Tongue, and we we always leave from Tugra. So, 
it didn't help, but uh, you can use them as excuses, but I don't want to use, you know, they're, they're not excuses. Sydney uh, deserved the victory tonight. It comes down to footballing cliches. <laughs> if you can't put the ball in the back of the yeah. Game. And they had several chances to win the game. They did. And uh, they, they let Sydney steal it right at the end, which is disappointing. Yeah, I think Great I had... support from the Mariners fans, though. Yeah, I thought they the were... Mariners fans were brilliant. It was really good to be like involved with them, and they had, they had so many songs, didn't they? It was awesome, very good. And they My had... favourite was, we've got Montgomery, he's f***ing quality, we've got Montgomery. For Mariner Pedge Bowich, the workday does not end after walking off the training pitch. So yeah, I'm PT slash uh, string conditioning coach as well, so it varies from clients, from any type of work, from working in the city to I have professional boxers that I do training for as well. You can look in 10 to 15 hours probably max a week where in the past I might have gone a little bit too much and had to cut back on because it was probably starting to affect me on the field. Hey Victor, how are you mate? You good? Yeah, good thanks. Uh, I'm just confirming our session today at 12 o'clock. You ready to go? Sweet. Alright, cool. I'll catch you there at the gym and we're heading for our kickboxing session. See you buddy, bye. So I've got a little protein hit here with tuna, beans, kidney beans, a lot of variations of protein in one hit here that I like to have at around you know, mid-morning snack before my main lunch. Juggling a part-time job is unusual for A-League players, but the balance is carefully monitored. You know, football comes first and I've got to work my business around that as well and not going overboard in terms of workload, so I have to regress that to make sure I'm fit and healthy for football. Uh, we're heading into the gym where I'm going to conduct my uh, session with my client, uh, just here in just off George Street. It's a great benefit to have, and then understanding how the side of recovery works with dietitian as well. So it's it, yeah, it's a great thing to have. Always got to back yourself. <laughs> Being a professional athlete, obviously that's the main goal here, and having this side job is something I've always had a passion of. And again, not overdoing one or the other to. You know, overuse yourself. All right, don't have to go too hard to start with if you still want to warm up. So one, uh, one, two. But look, I enjoy it. It's a good distraction from football. But when I'm on the field, I'm there to play football, and that's it. And again, uppercut hook. Good. Then a duck, another uppercut. Slip. Up. Good. Push, push. Good, rest. He loves the jump kicks. Eve, and many of the Central Coast's most attractive beaches are packed full of tourists and locals alike. 12,000 of these sunburnt and sand covered masses squeeze into Blue Tongue for the last game of 2012. where it started for the Mariners with a win and with a team from Gosford on top of the table and they've proved tonight they have the depth to go with their undoubted quality. Full-time scoreline, the Central Coast Mariners won, Perth Glory nil. In line with the festive atmosphere, players allow their children to breach the inner sanctum, a common occurrence in this family-centric club. We're in Blue Tongue, Blue, at Blue Tongue Stadium. The Mariners won the game on New Year's Eve. He's Sunny, yes, and um, I'm Luca. We're um, Miller Stadovsky's two boys. 
the team played good. Yeah. I hope they work as hard as they can. They, work, they try their hardest. And yeah. Go Mariners. Go Mariners. It was, it was pretty tough, especially first half. Um, it's always tough when you've got uh, you know, new players coming into the squad, uh, into, the, into the starting 11, um, and it takes a bit of time to get used to. We had those two not so good results the past two weeks, but definitely to end the way 2012 with the win is um, definitely great. Well, He's a pretty boy. Simon can make us. Pretty boy. From Gosford, for myself, Simon Hill, from Andy Harper and the entire Fox Sports team, a very happy new year to all of you. At Gosford Waterfront, the year goes out with a bang, and the Mariners look forward to a new year and a new set of challenges that will further test its resolve. Recovery for the Central Coast Mariners is a relaxed event. The Haven at Terrigal offers everything this team needs to wash clean any wounds and move on to the next game. Enjoy your recovery session today. No regrets. Okay. Okay boys, just circle, have a stretch. Nice and close, come on. We try to change our recovery sessions up a little bit. We use the recovery session to assess how everyone's come up from the game. Um, we're blessed with a beautiful environment here, so on a nice day we try to get here as often as possible after a game. You know, it's, it's more than just physiology, like we, we like to get the boys together and we've got a few Scottish and English boys who are petrified of sharks, so we get them into the water, it gets the team together, it freshens everybody up mentally and uh, gets them a bit of a laugh together. So first session back after a game for us is always day three. So we play our game, then the next morning is a recovery session, then it's players day off. And first day back, it's uh, just an opportunity to catch up with everybody. Morning. Morning. Tommy, how are you, mate? How's it feel? There's always a handshake, there's always a greet. Uh, everyone comes in and says hello. The physio room or the medical room tends to be a bit of a social hub. Yeah, one, uh, one constant around here is, is laughter and, and noise. Um, you know, when we first moved in here a few months ago, it was literally a, you know, a brick and concrete shell that felt, in terms of its construction, like a garage. And, and you know, a few of the boys helped out. We painted the walls, we got the whiteboard up to get things a little bit more organised, put some carpet down, and, and we've made it at home. Well, they usually sort of touch before they become a problem, and they usually stay sort of touch long after they're not a problem. So if you're not sort of touch, it's not the be-all and end-all, but it's a good sign. To try and make good good consistent decisions, we need to have good consistent information. So one way of trying to get that for us is three days post game, we check their ankle range of motion, which is important for shock absorption, and we also check their groin power. When you're ready, when you're ready, then you go. Oh, you're paying 290? I'm paying 290, I reckon you just snuck over. 290, wow. We, we've got 25 blokes to look after. We can't individually you know, walk guys to the gym and show them what their exercises are every day. We have a, have a strong culture of independence where the players are responsible for preparing themselves. They come in, they know, they know what they've got to do. They'll write down their own scores. It's, a, you know, it's just a weekly checkup which we find really helpful in, uh, in our environment. So it's good that they have these sessions and practice those sorts of things, eh? Yes. Here we go. Ready to start and you watch this. When that, remember that game we watched with um, Western Sydney and yeah. Victory, Melbourne Victory, and I had a few shots. Training before. sessions at the Centre of Excellence are open for all to see most of the time. And today, a family of supporters from Northern Queensland watched their team preparing for the weekend. Yeah, look, it's first day back in today, so, um, you know, we just try to turn the players' bodies on and turn their minds on. He's just going to check off to the side. He's going to touch, touch, touch. Touch, then back to one touch, okay? We're always trying to work on making them better footballers, so it's all about, you know, the things that football demands and that's technique, you know, the, the principles of how we play and, you know, being explosive over the first five metres. A little bit quicker, this one. Good, Mickey. Good. Toe up. Get that toe up. Heel straight up to your ass. Turn it over nice and quick. Come on. Pop, pop, pop. Knees up, toes up. Same as the start. Looks like it was pretty warm for them. Don't know how they do it. It's all the heat, hey? It's really hot today. They said 39 in town. Oh, really? Probably while they started a bit earlier. Yeah. 
Good, Rosie, great touch out of your feet, well done. There's always physical things that, that I need to work on, um, whether it's improving their capacity or it's uh, preventing injuries or um, you know, working on little individual weaknesses and, and making sure that every player has the ability to perform at their best come the game on Sunday against the Wanderers. Um, it, it's really important that we give players that opportunity and that um, you know, they, can, they can perform their best for the club and themselves. Performing well week in and week out is a result of the hard work by many people at the Mariners. Team manager Rick Catty is no exception. Getting ready for the uh, game against Western Sydney. Uh, I've got my checklist with all the players that are in the squad. So I've just got to get all their gear ready. This comes from the FFA, it tells us what, what we're wearing, what they're wearing. I know it's in black and white, but that's a home shirt. Dark shorts, so they're blue, white socks. In an environment where preparations begin well in advance and details are checked and rechecked, things don't always go to plan. Andrew, how are you? Good, mate, how are you? Yeah, good. Hey, you know these sandwiches, were they, they were ordered for late. As far as I'm aware, yeah. Yeah, they said they know nothing about it. Oh, uh, really? No, like, they're, they're making them all now. I hope I get there, I'll get there as quick as I can. But... All right, well, just ring, give Sharon a ring, because I spoke to her this morning. She said, oh, yep, yeah, don't forget to remind Clarkie two o'clock for the sandwiches. Yeah, all right. All right. Okay. Bye, mate. Yeah. See ya. Bye. Very good. Players get there an hour and a half before the game for the kickoff, so I get there about an hour and a half before they get there to make sure that everything's set up. Uh, so when they walk in, all their gears out, everything's ready to to go. Generally, I, I look after all the the playing gear, or the training gear, or the clothing, and everything like that. Um, and Paul has his roles, he'll come in, make sure the balls are all pumped up, fill all the water, drink bottles, and then you know, between the two of us, we'll set up the ice baths, um, and we just do whatever needs to be done. Those that surround the team have done all they can to get the result needed. It is now up to the players to execute the game plan against a team that is very much on the rise. Next time on The Code, Life with the Mariners. Well, the atmosphere is electric. McBreen into the area, lovely quick feet. One thing I was very happy with, huh? I thought that we kept Dano real quiet. But Justin's a surfer in the, uh, in the household. <clears throat> As we all know, I can't surf, so I have to ride this big boat. One of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life. What? Oh. <laughs> you snapped the paddleboard in half. Played it at the best of our ability. I've told you many times, no one can touch us. No one can touch us. The only thing that can undo us is ourselves. How the hell wasn't that a foul? Right, you can go, please. Oh, right. What for? Up to the stands. Jeez, I tell you what, you got thin skin, you boys.